Well, welcome to It's About Time on Think Tech from our downtown studio at the core of Honolulu. I'm your host, Becky Sampson, a professional speaker, author, and coach. Do you have an idea for a business and wonder what it takes to make that happen? And maybe you have a business but might be struggling to get it off the ground, or you might be thriving in your business and want to take it to the next level. So joining me here in the studio today is Celeste Thomas, principal broker and owner of Soldier to Soldier Real Estate, host of a real est uh, radio show called Real Life Real is Real Estate, and most importantly, a serial entrepreneur. So today we're going to be talking about so you want to be an entrepreneur and about what it takes to start, sustain, and thrive in seeing your ideas come to light. So welcome, Celeste. Thank you, Becky. Or for Lester, having me. whichever Lester, way. Celeste, <laughs> just don't call me at the two thirty a.m. I'll try not to. Um, I I love I I'm so grateful that you're here today because I you're just somebody I was on your radio show. Yes, actually. she was a great guest. It was what like was one that, of the a couple easiest months shows. Ago? A couple months ago, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. He goes, just show up and we'll just talk. And I was like, <laughs> okay, you know. He I, fit right in. It was a great thing. Oh. You know, that, that was a very easy show. You can have a, a just a dialogue, yeah. you, you know, yeah. and then with you having that real estate background, it helps so much also on the show. Yeah, you know, I, we were kind of talking earlier. Uh, I was in real estate for many, many years and did property management, but also high end and first time home building and stuff like that. So that was kind of fun that we connected. And we met, I don't know, back in April, ah, April so. or May yeah. or something like that. And uh, I know when I came on your radio show, we talked a little bit before it and you had some amazing ideas of how you've been able to grow your business um, in being an entrepreneur and being successful at that. But before we kind of get into that, that part of it, let's, what are some of the things and challenges that you see with being an entrepreneur? Like what, there's, there's some stuff, right? For me is, is making sure I get enough sleep. <laughs> ah, self-care. Well, I only say that because I understand when I went into this thing, uh -huh. That either I'm all in or I'm not. And I think that's the mm. biggest thing for anybody that's thinking about starting a business or, or they currently have a business. Right. You gotta either be all in or not because there's so many days where you're gonna be tired, mm -hmm. you're getting phone calls late at night. But if you're all in and you understand that before you go into it, then it's not a problem. So and how do people in your in your experience, how maybe for you or for the people that you've worked with, how do you see that they get all in? What, I mean, what does it start with? I think sometimes a lot of people look at entrepreneurship as, it seems to be the new fad now. Mm. You, you know, before it used to be, I want to be an athlete, I want to be a, a doctor, I want to be mm -hmm. a sports person. Because a lot of people sometimes think about money. Right, right. You, you know, and now entrepreneurship seems to be the thing because of, you know, sometimes the TV and you see the people with the nice cars yeah. and all that stuff and they're entrepreneurs. But I really think what it really takes is you got to love what you do mm. and then, it, then you don't work a day in your life. Yeah. It doesn't seem like work when, you, when you're, you're working. Playing. Yeah, exactly. When yeah. you're working 18, 19 hour days and people are like, oh, you work so much. I'm like, no, I didn't work an hour today, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because I actually love what I do, you know. Yeah. What, what started you being an entrepreneur? How, how old were you? Literally, I was 26, I think. And you're 27 now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm 24. Just, I'm going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> so I started a um, uh, non-medical mercy transportation company uh -huh. called Count on Us. As a matter of fact, I still keep one of the hats and shirts. Uh, and what's that day. called? Um, Count on Us. Count on Us. Yeah. It was okay. a non-medical emergency transportation company. What most people didn't know, and I didn't know this at the time either, was literally you could transport patients. I, I literally bought three used ambulances. Mm -hmm. Um, had them fixed up, and I started working for contracts from the hospitals and stuff mm. in order to take people to dialysis, mm -hmm. run records back and forth. Um, and I don't know why I got this idea from, but I know I wanted to do something. I was actually still in the Army full time at that time, also. Yeah. So, literally, I was playing G.I. Joe from nine to five, and then on the weekends and after that, I was doing building that company. And the great thing about that company is I failed miserably. <laughs> okay, but so that's part that's part of entrepreneurship. Though. Exactly. And that's my You gotta be I'm okay to fail. Yeah. You have to understand that you're gonna fail. Yeah. Well and I and I often like to say fail faster so you can succeed quicker. Exactly. Because when you when it it's not a level of judgment towards that, it just worked or it didn't work. Um, you don't have to beat yourself up over it. And I 
I kind of hate the word failure because people are so afraid of that. Um, but if you have an idea and you put it out there, you just look back and go, you know, I would say don't look back unless you look back to see how far you've come. You've got to look at the lessons that, that are there. And how, I mean, how important is that as an entrepreneur? Well, I think our school system sometimes use the word fail and failure is a yeah, bad thing. big F. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But if you look at most successful companies and you go back and talk to the mm -hmm. head of those companies, they fail a lot. Yeah. You know, and that was part of the process. Yeah. And it wasn't looked at as a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It looked as a part of the process in order to get to where you wanted to go. So what did, what did you think you learned from your first venture? I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> well, the point of that is, it was, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You, you, you got to start from somewhere. Yeah. And you got to start by working the channels. And I think the biggest thing was the educational side of it mm -hmm. from who do I contact, reading books every day, um, getting into... The self-development of it. A, a, exactly. Mm -hmm. There are tons of self-development now. I'm going to tell you my weakness. Mm -hmm. My weakness is, especially when I hire other people, is... I think they should be like me mm. and self-develop. And I quickly realize everyone doesn't think that way and operate that way. Right. Because I'm always having my entrepreneur hat on. Okay, why doesn't that person not You're looking at the big picture yeah. where they're hired for a specific reason. Exactly. And, that's, and that, that is a difficult thing for an entrepreneur because you, you want it to run the way that we see it. Yeah. And that's just, that's... Not everybody thinks like us, you right? You think everybody should. <laughs> Why are you not self-development? Why are you not reading? <laughs> well, and I always say, go into business, and that's the best way to learn your weakness and your strengths. Oh, absolutely. And, and to be able to, this is a principle that I teach with entrepreneurs, is you find your strengths, right? And find your weaknesses and find somebody else that that's their strength, and they become part of your team. Oh, I love that. Oh, Because I, I clearly think they were. we got to build our team of leaders, my friend. And I tell, matter of fact, I just hired another assistant, and she was my old assistant before, mm -hmm. and now she's coming back on. And she knows that, hey, look, I'm hiring you to cover up my weakness. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Not, not to enhance my experience, because I have those, but right. I'm hiring you to cover up my weakness, and that's the main purpose. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's important. That's a really important aspect, especially when you're going out, because entrepreneurs try doing it on their own. Yep. And they think that they're an island, and that they think that they have to row... I remember I was having a conversation with one of my business partners, and, and I said to him, I said, get out of all of the things that you need to do, you know, to be able to move forward. you got to get this person doing this and this person doing this. But oftentimes, we don't have a lot of resources. Yep. So, I mean, so you said back on your very first go at it in being an entrepreneur, you learned that, you know, a lot of your stuff was self-development. You learned what you're weak and what you're strong at. And I was doing everything. I was, I was doing, doing mom everything. and pop versus trying to actually build a, a business. Right. I was the driver. I was a person that was taking the um, appointments. I was the guy that was cleaning the, mm -hmm. the ambulances. I was trying to do everything in order to save a dollar. But what I quickly realized is I can't grow yep. that way. And in order for me to grow, I should be able to walk into my business and no one needs me. <laughs> and I think sometimes it's yeah. hard for a lot of people to let go. I'm waiting on that day when I can walk in and I'm like, what are you doing here? We don't need you here. So what advice would you have for yourself on that first, that first go out? That first go out, what I would change different would probably be to actually read a little more than I did, even though I read every day. Yeah. I literally read about two or three pages a day. Mm -hmm. And so if I read two or three pages of something a day and I learn something new mm -hmm. every day, then... And you're growing. Then I'm growing. Growing. And so develop you... So you went from that, what kind of, what's, what was your next venture? My next venture, you, you won't believe this actually, I, I bought a McDonald's franchise. Oh, really? And I went out to Hamburger University out in Florida, when they had it out in Florida then. Mm. And I thought it was about the fries and the burgers. Mm -hmm. And I was so far from that It's a real true. estate business, right? Hey, exactly. <laughs> it was all about real estate. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Starbucks is all about real estate. That's mm -hmm. why their location is where, mm -hmm. where they're at. And what I learned from is there's so much psychology behind in, in business. Mm. You know, this, at this time when I went to Hamburger U, it was the credit card thing was coming right, out, right. where they were testing credit card machines at McDonald's mm. and seeing if there was a growth in purchases mm -hmm. because there was a machine versus there wasn't a machine. Mm -hmm. And what they found out was people had the tendency to spend more yeah. if they swiped it uh. versus if they paid cash. Yep. 
And you'll think, I'm, cause I asked a guy at a meeting one day, I said, why do we have a psychologist at McDonald's? I mean, <laughs> we trying to talk people out of eating fries or something? I'm like, what's the point? Yeah. What? It's all psychology. Psychology exactly. and selling, right? Exactly. That's a great, I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, that's a great audio. Have you ever listened to that one? Psychology of selling? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's understanding why people buy what they buy and how they, they make those decisions. And it's all psychology. I mean, everything in, in life, but same thing with our own psychology, you know, and, and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. I think what's bad for us sometimes, though, is when someone's trying to sell us something, I, I, at least for me, mm -hmm. there's no in-between with me. Mm -hmm. If I want it, I'm the easiest seller. ever. If I don't want it, you're just wasting your time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, but, but that is also, that's something I always say, too, is you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. Uh -huh. And you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Meaning, I mean, they want it or they don't, right? Exactly. We don't have to sell anything when, when you're doing it the proper way. So in that kind of thing. So you went from McDonald's, and then that, is that what got you into real estate? What got me into real estate? I started um, flipping houses mm. um, just because I wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. I have to be busy going. I, I just never had the ability to sit still and, mm. and go to the beach and enjoy. I just, I just couldn't. It made me feel like I was missing something. Right. And this is my whole time in the, in the Army. So I left McDonald's and started flipping houses in Oklahoma. Mm. Um, spent 20 years in the Army after that. I bought houses every time I PCS. I was like, oh, man, it's about time to retire. What do I want to do? Mm. So the natural transition was to go into real estate. Right. You know. And you know, I think we've talked about this too, is uh, how much of your background of being in military and that structure has played a part in your success in, in your company and your entrepreneurship? I think the biggest thing is you don't go home until the job is done. Yeah. That's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. And I quickly realized here sometime, it's not the same thought process. When I say mm -hmm. here sometime, it's, I hate to use the word civilian role because I am a civilian now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But sometimes most people don't see it as you finish. And mm -hmm. then you go home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always, always tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I was always, you're taught in the military, no, you, you don't go home until it's done. Right. And then when it's done, then you go home. And you do it so, correctly. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a long night. Or else you just keep taking the test over again and just keep doing it over until you get it right. So, so I, I took something from every job I had. I, I was actually a recruiter mm. in the military. And at this time when I was a recruiter, now we're asking, there was three wars going on. Yeah. So... I'm going into parents' house and asking their, and their young daughters and sons mm. to the military and knowing that there's three wars going on, yeah. that the probability of them going to war is very high. Mm. And was it tough? Yes. Oh, yeah. But again, I learned so much about the psychology of people. What, what did you learn? Like, what's, what so is words, who, is, who is the influencer? Who is the person that's making the decision? Mm. And what we quickly found out was it was the mom. Not necessarily the kids that were one making decisions. So if you could influence the mom that it was a good idea for Johnny to join the army, yeah, then Johnny would join the army. Mm. It was really about finding the influencer. And even even today, it's in real estate the same way. When I go into someone's house, it's always either the wife or the husband. Okay, but which one uh, typically? Here, it's been the wife. Has it? Yeah. yeah. I was well, going to say the same thing when I did it for years too. It's usually the wife that makes that decision. Because this is her home, yeah. right? This is where they're going to reside. And the husband's is... like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, when they see the closet, they're like, okay, I'm taking all of that. Yeah. <laughs> they always make that joke, right? That, that the woman's going to take the whole entire closet and the guy can be in the, in the hallway. That sounds familiar. So, so, um, so yeah. So let's, let's just take a break right now, actually. We're going to go into the break. When we come back... Let's talk more about the challenges and also some of the things that you have really worked for you to take you to the next step of entrepreneurship because you have some really great um, things to say or concepts that I know that if people apply them into their businesses, that they're going to be able to take it to the next level. Oh, so, absolutely. So, yeah, we'll be taking a break. Um, I'm Becky Sampson. This is It's About Time on Think Tech. And we're talking to Celeste or Tom Thomas about so you want to be an entrepreneur. So stay tuned for more. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. 
Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it. Even financial health, we'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Hi, we're back and I'm Becky Sampson, the host of It's About Time. I'm with Celester Thomas, and we're talking today about, so you want to be an entrepreneur. So before the break, we kind of were talking about some of the ch challenges and, and the journey, really, that you've been on as an entrepreneur. And um, you're now in a couple of the businesses that you've been in, involved in. What are you doing now? I mean, you're, you've done some McDonald's stuff, and you did some um, other earlier businesses, and now you're in real estate. I mean, obviously, you're retired from the military. Right. And so you call your real estate company Soldier to Soldier. I call, yeah, Soldier to Soldier Hawaii Realty. There's, yeah. a, there's a reason behind that. I won't go yeah. into details. Well, give us a little snaps. Like, what, what um, made you want to? Originally, it had another name. Uh huh. And I received a phone call from a lawyer that says, hey, you need to assist and desist using mm -hmm. that name. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I did all the research, looked it up, and it was never filed or anything else. Mm -hmm. So the entrepreneur in me said, I'll just change the name where it's very close. Mm. But still within the guidelines. Guidelines. Yeah. And the funny thing is, me neither the guy that um, were, were fighting over that name. Mm -hmm. None of us can use it today. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Yeah. But, but, it's an but obstacle. It, but again, uh, again, it's part of being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I tell people is there gonna be tons of challenges in the way. Yeah. How do you adjust and, and move past those challenges? Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's definitely. I know on the screen they, they've got your website. Um, soldier oh, to Soldier Hawaii Real Estate or Realty, um, and there's actually let's just talk talk real quick since this is up. I was talking to you before the show. I think it's really interesting because what's happening right now in this industry of real estate, um, a lot of homes are coming up. Talk a little bit about that. How the Airbnb is causing a lot of people to put their homes up. You know, the funny thing is, I had an uh, Airbnb. Um, expert guy on the radio show, uh -huh. which he brought a lot of insight to one, the changes, yes. the areas, and how some places were in the zone where uh -huh. you can do Airbnb, and now they're outside of that zone. Mm. So what you see a lot now is people are putting their properties up because yeah, because they don't want to get stuck. yeah, and, and a lot of that Airbnb income that they were getting mm -hmm. was supplementing their income one, to pay mm -hmm. for the house, and two, their lifestyle. Yeah. And I never looked at it from that point of view. I was like, wow, you're right. You know, it affects people on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. And at the same time, if you're living in a community, mm -hmm. and of course, when you're doing Airbnb, and most people know you come to Hawaii, you what? They're up all night and they're partying, they're having oh, fun. Yeah. But if you're living in that community, that may be a nuisance to you. So I, I can understand both sides of it. Yeah. Now, I'm not sitting on each side of the aisle, but I, I do understand both sides of the, the issue and why some are wanting in there and some. Don't want it in the area. Yeah. Because as you know, Hawaii is pretty expensive to live here, you know? Yes. Really? You think? Yeah, just a little bit, you know. <laughs> hey, People we, always use milk. I don't even drink milk. <laughs> we we got to pay the price to live in paradise, my exactly. friend. Exactly. That's what I always say. But, but I think that that's, so the point with that with entrepreneurs is, again, I love the, the thing that's expect the unexpected, right? Yep. I mean, you're in a business and the business is going a certain way and then all of a sudden something comes into play, like a law passed or something. And it changes the dynamics. Exactly. So talk about how important it is as an entrepreneur to be adjustable and to be viable. I think it's, it's very important to be a foreseer. And why I say that is yeah. that there's a billion dollar company that just went out of business. I'm mm. going to call the company's name. Right. Um, because they didn't foresee Amazon mm. and the way a lot of people do what now? Shop they online. click, shop mm -hmm. online, and that's how they Especially buy here stuff. in the island. It, it, exactly. So those companies that got affected by that mm -hmm. didn't foresee it. They saw a lot of people, and I think I read the 
general or article on it or something saying it was like, oh no, people still want to come into the store and touch and mm -hmm. feel the products and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which is not the case anymore. It's not. Is that interesting? That's where that psychology comes in at, right? Yeah, because people habits are changing. It's it's almost yeah, and I think it's really interesting because I know when the water first came out, I thought who in the world is going to pay for bottled $8 water? Of water. <laughs> and now nobody's going to drink regular water because of that. And it's kind of interesting to see the shift that's happened with our buying. Um, and regardless of what business you're in, you've got to be able to see where the trends are yep. and stay up with other things that are happening in the communities that can affect your business. Instead of just going, well, this is, for instance, let me give you an example. My family, uh, we own a summer camp for kids. And for 46 years in southern Utah and all the national parks, and um, it was kind of a more of a, a business where rich kids came to because it was a little more expensive and mm -hmm. adventurous. But the way that we marketed was to go to these, these shows, the, the camping shows. Camping shows, right. And uh, that's just how my dad's done it for 40 years, right? But as the Internet started coming yep. and as people started sharing pictures, I remember going, well, we've got like this these little disposable cameras, and we're going to have to get them just, you know, and then on there so people can share their experiences. Right. And people are like, oh, you can't do that. That's like privacy issues. It's different. <laughs> and, and, and so, it, you know, we are now out of business. We went out of business, and, and I mean, this is just my way of looking at it, but it's because we kept doing the things that we did for so long and didn't conform kind of to the new way and get into the psychology again and into the social realm of sharing those photos because that, that was not okay 20 years ago. And now it's like, what are you kidding me? I want my kids, I want to know what they did two seconds ago. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and I want to share it with the world. Uh, but it's very different. So that, that's another great concept is to stay up with what's going, you know, be able to look in the, in the future. I always admire the NFL, a billion dollar business, a billion, billion dollar industry, mm -hmm. and they're on Snapchat. It's not funny. <laughs> I you haven't even thought know how to use Snapchat. Yeah, exactly. You never thought the NFL was on Snapchat. You can literally go to Snapchat and see the NFL on them posting stuff on Snapchat. Okay, so are you on Pep Snapchat? Yes, I am. Okay, I know you're on Snapchat. You're also on YouTube. I'm on I've YouTube. Watched... I'm on... I stalked you. I don't do Craigslist. But, uh... You're not on Craigslist? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, a real estate agent is not... Yeah, anyway, um, so you're on Snapchat, you're on Craig. I'm on Snapchat, YouTube. I'm on, um, what is was it, TikTok. Well, I've never even heard that one. Yeah, see, you never even heard of TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> well, I obviously won't find you there. Are you on Instagram? Instagram, yep. Okay. On all the social media platforms. And they're like, oh, you're everywhere. Okay, so this is another concept of, of entrepreneurship, right? you gotta, you got to be willing to think outside the box and put yourself in all those different, and they're all free. free. You can't think, like, how you would go. Yes. Buy something or find something. You know, you always have to look at how the majority of people are finding things. Right. And where they're at, you know. So one thing that you're really good at, because I do stalk you, just so you know. Okay. What is it? I love that you really are an out-of-the-box thinking person, that you do these little cute little videos. And that's not normal for real estate. You know what I mean? Usually they're all very proper. And they, I think there was one that you were on the bus. Oh, yeah, I was on the bus. You and, and your... And I was saying, get on the bus when the market was changing. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to be... And nowadays, in marketing, you've got to be even that much more creative. But then also talk about how sometimes that can be overwhelming. That we, we feel like we have to do everything. Like, how do you manage all of that? Uh, one day at a time. I love that answer. <laughs> <laughs> that is one, a great One day answer. at a time. But um, I really believe... And this is me studying people. I really believe people like seeing people in their natural Absolutely. environment. And the way I act on my social media platform, this is the way I act. Well, I'm on, on TV, making a commercial, it doesn't matter, Absolutely. radio, I'm, I'm the same person. Mm. You know, and I think people gravitate mm -hmm. to that more than anything else. Well, you and know? I love that you said, because people, what I've learned about social media is that they want to see you, like, not advertising. Because that's, people get really, really tired of being advertised and oh, be sold to. Fire. They like to be entertained. And so when you do something, if you can put marketing with, um, with entertaining them, like being on the bus, it, things, that's, that's called Stick to It. What is that book called? Um, uh, stuck? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. I don't, I don't but know what you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Made to stick. Made to yeah. stick. Because that's what sticks in our brain. We think of, oh, Lester, he's on a... 
He's on a bus and he's talking about how you better get on the bus or not, get off. You know, you know the funny thing, um, my first TV commercial I did, it's about two, three years now, and I was debating whether or not, I said, you know what? Everybody are tired of being locked in the contract. Yeah. I was looking for what is consumers tired of being? Different, yeah. Oh, they don't look like for the being problem. in contracts. Mm -hmm. Because you know how I solve this problem? Just tell them they can fire me if they're not happy. <laughs> And oh, awesome. I said it on the commercial, and I recorded it, and there was some people at the station were like, ah, it's a little harsh. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, ah, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. And literally the day before, I was about to take it out. Mm -hmm. And they looked at it and said, no, just leave it in, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I left it in. So literally to this day, even, matter of fact, this even happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. This guy was in Starbucks, like, hey, man, you're the fire me guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love but it. But that's what they remember me by. Of course. You know, because that whole, you can fire me. Right. Then, of course, I get some people pull up and say, hey, man, you ever been fired? You know, I'm like, no, I'm trying to, though. You got you selling your house? <laughs> so, it's in, and why do you think the whole, you're fired bit, you know, that's, a so, that's been a social thing with Trump. You know, you're fired from entrepreneur? I didn't, people, and some people confuse that. I also thought I got it from, um, oh, yeah. from Trump, but I, I just know that people don't like being in contracts. Yeah, exactly. I don't like being in contract. Yeah. So, so it's like, what do down. I do to alleviate that problem? Well, and it alleviates their stress and their objection, right? Yeah. And understanding objections in entrepreneurship is when you're in business, you got to know what they're thinking so that you can speak to that and the objections to be able to give them what they really want. But here's the psychology of that also. Most people will not fire you unless it gets so far, so bad. Yeah. Because nobody wants to fire anybody. Yeah. If you say, yep, I'm going with this person, it will take a lot for that person to say, you know what, I'm going in another direction. Right. See, that's the psychology I understand. Even though I say that, mm -hmm. I understand it's still hard for people to no, so now you know I want to go in another direction. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, that goes back to the psychology of the way people think and, and act through certain things. That's awesome. So, as we wrap up, where do people find you? We know that it's social media, right? All social that media. Stuff. You, you, you can go to my <laughs> website at www.soldiersoldierhawaii.com. Mm -hmm. You can call me at 808-312-7884. I don't even think I had your number. I need your number. No, but I think we were going through uh, <laughs> Facebook, Facebook. See? social media. <laughs> I, I love it. Thank you so much for being here today. No, and thank, thank you, for, you everyone. for sharing your wisdom and out of the box thinking and being an entrepreneur and showing people that you can be really successful if you get creative and you, like you say, jump off the cliff, right? Just jump. You just got to jump. Worry about it. We'll at the bottom later. <laughs> <laughs> just jump and the wings will show up. I promise you. I promise, promise. So. Thanks so much. We're out of time and uh, we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Becky Sampson with It's About Time on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. Uh, we've been talking to Celester Thomas with Soldier to Soldier Real Estate. And thanks to all of you for being here. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, our floor manager, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all on together. And of course, I'll see you next Wednesday for It's About Time on Think Tech. I'm Becky Sampson. Mahalo, everyone. Thank you.